Okay, so continuing here on um, the file uploads video number two, um, we were talking about injecting the managed beans. So let's go ahead and uh, access the database from the dbbean.get database, which will create a map of keys of strings and images. So the key from now on, uh, where we are going to persist our images is going to be basically the image name and the image name is going to be binded to the image object which will contain the content type its name and ID and the content itself okay so basically when we have this all we need to do now is create an instance of the image type entities and ing equals new image there we go and image dot set actually the id well i guess we don't really need an id for this so let's go ahead and edit this yes yes we will get an error okay so it's going to be image dot set name, which is going to be obviously the image dot get submitted file name. Remember that guys. Image dot set content type also is going to be here. So image get content type. And the most important of them all is going to be the content. Problem is that we can't get the content directly only we only have the input stream correct <clears throat> so what we need to do is actually use the io utils but we are going to see that we only have two available classes and both from the sun packages and we don't want any of those so what we're going to do and i'm going to leave the jar file for you guys in the um in this video's resources for those who don't have it or um don't know where to get it from and we need to actually download the java commons io jar file so in our application as soon as we have it uh we're gonna create a uh, click on libraries and we're gonna say add folder and blah 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 Another way to do it is basically just in the libraries, just click right click and say add jar folder, for example. And there you go. Well, I actually already have it here. The org Apache commons.io jar. And that is it. So NetBeans will all automatically um, redeploy the application allowing us to access our new library so if we say io utils one more time you see that we have a third option now which is the one that we need and you can see we can get the byte array from an input stream here so that's the one that we want so we get image get input stream and that is all this should be byte, not bytes. Okay, guys, so as you can see, we obviously need to surround this input stream with some um, tri clatch statements. So we're gonna surround the whole block with it. There you go. And we're gonna get an error because it's um, actually caught the return block also. So let's just paste it there again. And let's maximize this. All right. So now that we have our content, what we can actually do is set the content. <laughs> Image dot set. Wow. What the hell am I typing? Set content content. And then after that, we're just going to say database dot put um, image dot get name as the key and the image as the value so there you have it we have actually 
successfully uploaded the image but one thing that um well in this case we can do for example is um we can surround all of this with a an if statement a conditional statement and saying that if the image is not equal to null then we can proceed to do what we were intending to do if not then we actually can send like a message right so we might as well do that let's go ahead and say basis context get current instance add message and the component ID is going to be the ID of the messages over here so might as well just create an ID here which is going to be image messages that's going to be called so image messages and we are going to create a new faces message instance here so new faces message um, and actually this does need a severity of type fatal let's just do that and say for example no image selected okay so how about we we try this out let's run our application and see that everything is working properly here uh what the heck oh actually i already know what it is um whenever we use our managed properties or whenever we inject a managed bean into another managed bean we need to set a setter method for that managed bean okay else it's not going to work so let's save our application here run the application and there we go so let's choose an image image is selected upload image all right so everything seems to be working properly now we obviously haven't checked if this is um actually doing something so um i guess we can do a two string method here just override it and then from the bean we can just say system so that we know that we have actually uploaded an image there um but actually the content should not be displayed because we don't really want that many characters being shown to us so let's just erase that and leave it this way okay uh, run our application again and see what we get so let's try to upload a file um, when the archive is not selected or when we haven't selected a file you see that it says no file selected so that's pretty good now let's do this go to our last fish here and as you can see we have our printed information here which is image content type of type image slash jpeg and the name of the image is called test image jpg so we know that it's actually working and um, well this is extremely cool right we can now um, upload files to our application um, and obviously we can create some validators for our um, image or our um, files that are being uploaded we can create some sort of validator to validate um, obviously what we are um, actually uploading is correct okay so you guys should already know that so I guess we have a couple of minutes left here 
before we have to sh continue to the next video so what i'm going to do is basically talk to you guys a little bit about servlets for those who don't really um know that much about them if you do then just go ahead and go to the next video okay um okay guys so um obviously since this isn't really a course about servlets i'm not going to go into really much detail so i'm just going to talk a bit about servlet um if you want to write down some of the information i tell you go ahead or if not then um i recommend you google it it's a pretty simple concept it does have a lot of things to learn and um it should be really useful for you guys to actually learn about servlets if you don't so when an application is deployed a web application in a server the server is only um, able to um, to serve or handle um, static HTML pages right so whenever we actually need dynamic content depending on variables or parameters or whatever we know that the server is not able to perform those type of tasks okay so the server is extremely simple in that way so it has to actually depend on servlets to manipulate dynamic html pages or xhtml pages in our case um, so this is basically like the main reason why servlets exist because servers are not able to provide dynamic content to through the HTML pages, right? So there are a couple of ways that a client, which in this case would be a browser, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox, whatever, the client sends a request to the server, right? And that request, which is an HTTP request, is going to be received by the server if the server s sees that um, the content or the resources that are being requested are not going to be able to be provided by the server then it's the server is going to just basically talk to the servlet itself right but the servlet and the server do not communicate directly um, there is an instance which is called the web container okay and i will talk uh, just a little bit about it so um let's just continue on so we know that a servlet is basically just a java program that doesn't have any main method it only has callback methods that are invoked by the web container so the web container basically makes it possible to communicate between the server and the servlet, right? And the web container actually allows the servlet to receive objects, okay? So Java objects um, to be able to manipulate the information and to serve dynamic content to the server or to the client because, well, uh, the HTTP requests are basically going to have um, a header and a line, right? And a body if it's going to be an HTTP um, or a post method, right? These aren't objects. So that information is going to be created in the web container. And the web container is basically going to create um, objects, request objects, response objects, for the servlet to be able to um, utilize that information. And we have just one more minute here, so I'm just going to make a debrief and maybe I will continue to talk about that in the next video. So basically the role of the web container is going to be to allow the communication between the servlet and the server. It's going to manage the life cycle of the servlet. So a servlet is going to live as long as the web container wants it to 
and obviously a web container is going to have several servlet instances and each servlet is going to be working for a different type of uh, dynamic information or requests or responses okay and the web container actually supports um, Java server pages um, it actually allows us for security and it has a it it actually creates a thread per request okay so that's the basics of servlets and web containers we will continue here on the next tutorial